Hi, welcome to Man's Perspective Africa. I am the Golden Voice God San Chiron Lovu. My name is Danny Shodongo, aka the son of Kano. We are coming to you from Karibu Inn. Karibu Inn is in Loresho. But on this episode, we are having a classic 105 radio presenter. You will hear this guy every single afternoon when you're driving home. He does a show with Ses Wamutungi. It's the one, the only, Mike yeah. Bodo. <laughs> <laughs> nice intro. I like that. <laughs> That's a nice intro. Yeah? Thank you for having me. Thank you. Most oh, welcome. by the way, the way we say it is uh, Mike and says, I have to know Samanga, where there? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, the way I forgot the where there. Where there? How could I forget where there? Like where, there. Is, where there is Kikamba to say, we are here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming. In fact, before we had started rolling, we were having a conversation here about a diary mm. and how you look at radio as a diary. Mm. Just help us have that thought process because I think it's a very unique way for a man to describe yeah. his career as a diary. Most men would describe it either in a gym setup, you mm -hmm. know. A man would describe yeah. it as it's very as something you are lo looking at a diary. Why a diary? And take us through that thought. Um, it started uh, back in the day. So yeah. uh, people don't know this about me, but I, I was. I was born and raised in the coast. Okay. Um, what happened was uh, my old man died when I was just about to sit my KCP mm. exams. Mm. And of course, that time you said I was what? I think I was 12 years old. Yeah. And um, you know, you want to know who your father was. I didn't mm. necessarily know him, know him properly, yeah. but I could hear what people say about him and all of these things. And I really, really wanted to know mm -hmm. what his life was yeah. all about. So I used to ask Made all the time, mm -hmm. hey, by the way, how was Fade on this? Mm -hmm. How was Fade on that? And of course, that time, Made being someone who was, I mean, she was a single mother and a widow mm -hmm. now, raising yeah. four boys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, she doesn't have time to sit with you. And She's to hustling. Tell you all these stories. Yeah, to yeah. tell you all these yeah. things. Yeah. She's yeah. always yeah. working, always yeah. working. Yeah. So I never had that compass. So what I decided was I will always look at things that I do yeah. mm -hmm. as a diary of my life, mm -hmm. right? Um, I look at it from when I started uh, practicing nursing mm -hmm. to nursing. me leaving nursing <laughs> mm -hmm. and to me go joining uh, Hot 96, going to XFM, going to Classic 105. All this is a diary mm -hmm. and I like, I like documenting it. That's mm -hmm. why even on social media you'll see a lot of the stuff I post are stuff about my life personally. Yes. Not necessarily because maybe I'm selling a product or I'm doing something. Yes, yes. It's just me. I'm on the couch, yeah. I'm at home. Or I'm hanging out with my daughter. Or like these real life diaries. Yeah. Uh, posts and also comments about my life such that, God forbid, yeah. should anything happen to mm. me, my kids will always know this. Yeah, they this can read your life. diary. You know, yes. I find that very interesting because there are a lot of subconscious things we do based on uh, whatever we went through in our childhood, you know. So, yes. for example, either we missed something or we got a lot of it, you know. So, at what point do you then navigate uh, not feeling like either you're doing it for the public demand mm -hmm. and you're doing it for the needs that actually you've listed here? Unfortunately, yeah. it will kind of seem like mm. it's a bit of both, but it's mm. not. Mm. Really, for me, it's usually purely for me. Mm. There are people who tell me, for example, um, uh, why is it you don't promote your page or build your audiences mm. and on social media and stuff like that? And I tell them, because I'm not doing it as a source of income. Mm. My source mm. of income is my job. Oh, okay. Mm. Here I'm just documenting what my life is about. Now, how it's interpreted, now I can't, I have no control over that. Okay. Yeah. If someone says, oh, this guy is doing this because he's trying to cloud chase, or this mm. guy is doing this because, no, literally, yeah, I mm. just do something because it's something that has happened to me. It's yeah. authentic, it's real, it's my life. Yeah. 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 And I really don't need to apologize yeah. for it. Yeah. There's something that you mentioned when we were starting, mm. and you mentioned about the passing of your father. Yes. And I, I think that's something that I think would be nice for us to touch on, especially mm. in regards to how that affected you as a, as a boy, because mm -hmm. at that point you're in a transition. Yes. You're 12, you're transitioning to become a teenager. Yes. And then you're then going to transition and become a um, man. Yeah. Then again transition and become <laughs> a father. <laughs> like, you know, how did that passing, did you feel like there was a point where it's like a learning stopped? It's like, when you look back, you're like, it's like I stopped learning something at one point. Yes. Um, what it does, mm. and, and for people who are not active in their children's lives i'll tell you for free it affects them i don't mm. care whether it's male or female it's gonna mm. affect that child i i felt like i had a best friend 
mm. in my family. dad. Because right. mm. my dad was was nurturing but also a disciplinarian. Yeah. I relied a lot on his information, in his guidance. I relied even whenever I would fail an exam, for example, mm. in primary school. Like he was the guy who'd tell me no, and you have to understand. I mean, he was um, he was a guy who had a doctorate in marine biology, like uh. a bookworm. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, when you read your present, first nurse, first nurse, then read your So, there was always this, there was always this oh, wow. pressure which he had on us in mm. terms of academics. And mm. so, when he passed away, and please note, he passed away three months to me sitting my KCP exams. Mm. Massive, yeah. I was confused yeah so i even said to people uh, fully and freely that i did fail my kcp exams mm. and but what he left me with at that point was just because you failed at this didn't mean you are a failure because mm. that's something he, that was big mm. with him he mm. tells you just try it if it if it fails it fails if it mm. works it works mm. so when when i finished kcp and i got into high school at that time of course uh, you have to also realize uh, now. Now, in hindsight, I'm realizing Made was grieving also. Mm. I mean, she's lost her husband, yeah. and she has got these four boys. So, mom didn't necessarily have enough time to, you know, spend with her four boys. Yeah. Uh, my yeah, big brother. Now she has to hustle. Now she has to hustle, mm. right? Yeah. Uh, my big brother was in high school uh, when I was joining Form One, yeah. but he was. He's more like my dad. He's very, very centered and book oriented i call him a career student he's always, <laughs> he's always leaving one professional student yes. <laughs> one cause to, to the another. next one. But congratulations to him he recently just got his doctorate also hey. in marine biology just oh. like hey. wow you guys are scientists scientists <laughs> i mean you were a nurse at one point so yeah, yeah. So you guys are science, science <laughs> people so it affected me high school i had no idea going mm. through even that period of teenagehood girls yeah. i was a shy kid you. you could not put I me, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. I was a shy kid. I was the kid in the background always. Mm. All the other really, what do you call it? Um, the vocal kids, kid, yeah. They were always in front of me. Mm. So what I did is, um, luckily is uh, in her wisdom, Made used to encourage us to get into a lot of sports. Yeah. Mm. So I started playing basketball mm. very seriously. Mm. Like that was now my escape from everything. Mm. Um, it was now school, basketball, home, school, basketball, home. And for a long time in my high school period, that was it. Yeah. When I finished high school, what happened now next was now I was told, literally, Made told me, I can't afford to take you to campus. Oh. She didn't have the money. Please mm. note, my big brother at that time had gone to Canada for higher education. She was mm. pouring all everything her into, yes. into him because mm. Uyundu at us idea and Yeah, it's you know like this the African thing. Very you pour to the first, yeah. Yeah. you're like, you, since your father is not here, you'll help me yeah. deal with these ones. Exactly. Yeah. And, and luckily enough is that sometimes God works in mysterious ways. Because huh? yeah. I went, uh, I remember I was shipped off to Shags. And I used to stay there alone. It used to affect me a lot. I used to be like, why am I not loved in this family? Yeah. <laughs> why am I in shags? Yeah. One brother is in Canada. My other y two younger brothers, they're in high school. Yeah. Me, I'm the one who's been thrown into shags to yeah. stay here. Yeah. But I learned a lot while I was there in shags. My mm. grandparents were very, very insightful about life and all of these things. So mm. they would really instill a lot of the character I have today. Yeah. Mm. Courtesy of the, my grandparents. Mm. And then um, one day, uh, one of my aunties asked me to apply at uh, Kenya Medical Training College mm. and when I applied I didn't even think I was going to get it but I did mm. I was accepted in for nursing because mm. one thing that my dad always wanted to uh, me to be was a doctor was a doctor yeah, yeah ah. he used to tell me you'll be a doctor <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so, so you one step in <laughs> yeah so I was you know be a nurse and then transition into Dude. into medicine yeah. into full time being a doctor and when that happened mm. I got in again, of course, there was that issue of school fees mm. that was not there. And yes, it does. It did affect me where I'm like, why, why, why is it that I don't get to go to campus? Mm. Why don't I get to go to college? Mm. So that's when, thankfully, the Ratansi group came through. Mm. Um, I used to go see, and big shout out to him, mm. uh, Mohamed Ratansi. I went and saw him and I explained my predicament and they offered me a full scholarship to, wow. yeah, to, to study nursing. And that's how I managed to actually complete a bit of my higher education yeah. yeah and 
Yeah, after nursing, then now. But that's a way scholarship. You can't. Yeah, can't. But you know, <laughs> you know what, what, what Mike is saying is very interesting. That first mm. of all, he talks about the father being a best friend. I think mm. not many of us can actually say yeah. that. Yeah. That our fathers were our best friends. Yeah. You know, generally, men and their fathers sort of have an antagonistic sort of relationship. Yes. Mm. I don't know. Sometimes it's about them trying to push you to be better. Mm -hmm. But it comes out as very aggressive, sometimes yes. very, I mean, there's no love there as yes. compared to a tender motherly love that yes. always, you know, many of us actually are much closer to our mothers than mm. we are to our fathers. But I think it's very important what he's saying, mm. that fathers can play a very important role in helping to ground a boy and to ground a child. Mm. Yes. I think we don't talk enough about that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. in fact, we don't talk much about it. Yeah. Mm. And I think maybe probably one of the reasons we don't talk much about it is because yeah. many people don't have fathers. That's true. So there is no, so you, you don't mm. have a reference point for many people to yeah. refer to and be like, you know, this is this is yes. the father I had. So for most people, everyone is trying to figure out their yeah. father I'll, I'll, in uh, themselves. Mm. Yeah, very true. And I even actually, um, I'll give you a very recent thing that happened over Christmas. Mm. Just uh, our entire extended family, we went to, uh, to Naivasha for Christmas. Mm. Okay. And I remember breaking down in front of my uncle mm. because I was talking to him and telling him about how I, I don't have a compass. Like you're saying, mm. I don't have a point of reference to say how how do i raise a child how mm. do i make sure my child is uh, okay mm. and catered i don't know yeah and i literally just simply broke down in front of him and i remember he left me with some great advice yeah he told me do the best you can with what you have yeah and leave the rest to god yeah mm. but do something mm. don't yeah, just don't be just, yeah. yeah let it be you know like what mike is saying because many times for some of us who perhaps are navigating this life, we often navigate it like we know everything. Mm -hmm. so it's very hard for men to admit that, honestly, I, I don't have an idea what, what I'm doing, yes. or I have an idea, but it's not very clear. Mm. So in, in the moment of trying to figure things out, we often do a lot more damage then because we're thinking. not willing to admit that, that honestly, by the way, thank you. perhaps I don't have an idea. But then, you know, sometimes... Why, why is it so... Why, 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 why are men so afraid to admit that, by the way, I freaking don't have an idea mm. of what I am doing? Maybe, maybe it's because of the stereotype type of what a man should be mm -hmm. yeah Ego, you are told yeah. you a man should be the leader yeah. a man should yeah. know the answers yeah. Yeah. a man should always be strong and as you why leaders why complainers mm -hmm. like as a man you suppose uh, society looks at you as a person who has all the answers mm -hmm. forgetting yeah. that sometimes even you are learning yeah, yeah. even you're trying to understand yeah. mm -hmm. think of it in terms of for example uh, how we see a lot of uh, married couples mm -hmm. who break up a few months or even uh, years after they get married. Mm -hmm. And probably these, these people had no, this guy had no idea, yeah. literally, how to be a proper husband, yeah. how to take the hits, how mm -hmm. to not take the, how to, to mm. know, in fact, which I'm learning with the hard way nowadays, mm. when to just shut up and <laughs> don't have an opinion. <laughs> you know? But yeah. it's, it's, people don't know. And I think you're right. It's mm. important for you to admit that I don't know. Yeah. Mm. And seek counseling and guidance from someone yeah. who can show you how to yeah. navigate. But also mm. most times I feel most men are not even, most older, sometimes older men are not willing to share. Yes. Because you see, it comes also with that issue of you're feeling as though Unaji yeah. Anika. It's like how you ever know, have you ever seen those couples, sometimes a couple fights because uh, the guy slept out. Yeah. Then you go out to your mother, then your mother tells you, but your father also used to cheat. Mm. Uh, yeah. And now you're left there like, ah, <laughs> <laughs> what is this, what's going on? Because uh, most men don't like to come out, because you feel like you're, yeah. I think for most men, we look at vulnerability uh, as, as a, a weakness. Weak. Exactly. You're yeah, like, if I'm vulnerable, yeah. if I let this information out, yeah. it means I'm weak. Yes. I'm not a strong enough man. I also think, I, I agree with you Chido, but I also think part of the problem with our generation is that we are raised by the media, we are raised by the internet. Yes. So we don't really have time to go back like you did with your uncle, to go back home and mm -hmm. sit with our uncles because they have all the time. Very They have all the time. Thing. If yes. you can't tell even your friend, exactly. mm. go look for someone in your family. Yeah. Sit down with them. Because mm. we sat with him and we sat over a bonfire vizuri and mm. I told him everything about my life mm. and he stood there and looked at me and even i, I remember asking him mm. how have you been married mm. over 40 years yeah. Mm. Eh? Yeah. and raised all these kids yeah and you're still doing it still now Akaniambia, do what you can with what you have mm. and leave the rest to god mm. but do something do something mm. because if you don't raise your kid yeah. who do you think is going to raise that kid the yeah. world the world will raise that kid. Yeah. And before you know it, you'll feel even worse as a father in your old age, mm. seeing your child going through some of the craziest experiences in life that even you did yeah. not go through. 
Exactly. Mm. You know how to deal with it now. Yeah. In fact, now that you're on the topic of marriage, mm. uh, you, like, well, you've had like two public relationships. Yes. Like one that I think ended sometime last year, yeah. and then now you're in one. And in the one that you currently are in, yeah. there is a point where she said that she had her f list of about 15 yeah. points of what she wanted in a man. Yes. Okay, okay, Billy. Billy, Billy. Yeah. But yes. you pitted the 13. Yeah. yeah. How do you do that transition? Yeah, as a man, and I, in terms of a transition from, you've come from a relationship where you guys didn't have children. Yes. Then you got a child later on. Yeah. Now you're in one where you have your children. And she also. has her children. Mm -hmm. You see, as a man, you've you've doubled, bro. Yeah. yeah. You only had two kids. Now yeah. you have two other kids that you now have to who are under your Actually, care. Three. Three other. So you have five kids. So that's a totality in uh, five kids. Yeah. Hey, bro, you love, you love big families. Eh? <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. But it's it's um, if, uh, the transition. It's about being intentional. Mm. I think I think sometimes like like it's important to have balance in life, mm. and being intentional about what it is you are doing is important. Mm. So I look at it like even when uh, when Shiko and I started being uh, dating. Um, it was something we discussed because, I mean, on her side, mm. she's got her kids um, who have their fathers. Mm. I've got my kids who have their mothers. Mm. So how does that blending happen? So you have to be intentional. Mm. I have to accept that I'm not taking just her. Mm. I'm taking her and those children. Mm -hmm. So whatever they need, if it's uh, like, I mean, uh, I do the hospital runs in case they need to, be, to go to the hospital. Mm. I do the school runs. If they need, like, you, are, you have to tell yourself, this is now part of your responsibility. Okay. Mm. And once you make it part of your responsibility, over time you, became, you become so used to it that it doesn't feel mm. like it's a problem. Like, when I, when I spend time with Nicole, Shiko is always there, and we go together mm. as one unit. So my daughter gets to see my, uh, my dad and his, uh, his uh, fiance, mm. which I can say now officially. Oh, you guys are officially? We're engaged, yeah. Oh. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations. Well, well, yeah. 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 So, the idea is once you're intentional about it, think of it like even the way you go to Jobo. Eh? Mm. Sometimes you don't feel like going to work, mm. but you know it's important. Yeah. Sometimes, um, like, I don't feel like doing date nights. Mm. Yeah, I want to just sit home and chill. But it's important. So you also say that about peeing. Peeing mm. is not important, but it's necessary. <laughs> <laughs> you have to get it done. But yes. <laughs> so once you realize, once you're intentional about that, mm. then it stops being a problem. In fact, you just yeah. know this is my responsibility. But, yeah. but, but Mike, I think uh, I, I need to probe a little bit more. I, I can imagine being Mike. Yeah. All these headlines screaming. Mm. People are always discussing your tough sometimes mm. you're trending mm. how, how do you manage to ground yourself and to still stay sane and do the normal mundane tasks of a father of an employee yeah. and just to keep things going because i think for me it would overwhelm me badly or oh, everyone has an opinion yeah. that's what i'll always believe mm. whatever you say about me whatever you talk about me that's <laughs> your opinion yeah. i don't need to agree or disagree with your opinion that's mm. how you see me so I wow. ignore that. Mm. Where it hurts me is when it affects my person. Mm. Mm. Or it affects a child. Mm. There now you'd have crossed the line. There for me, for me, attack me all you want. In mm. fact, you want to tukana me, whatever, please put me on a billboard and say that <laughs> I'm a big piece <laughs> I think when you yeah. work in a, the business we work in, yeah. everyone is always throwing stones at you. Yeah. In fact, half the people are looking at you and they're yeah. just like, who oh, is limited? You get a tough skin. What? I think if someone insults in me to my face, I really wouldn't yes, care. You wouldn't care. I'd be like, oh, but that's, that's how you feel. Yeah. Yeah. If someone insults his wife, yeah. Yeah. you can imagine how bad that situation mm, can be. Yeah. 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 So for me, it's, I don't care. Say, say anything you want about me. Yeah. Bro, do it. I'll, in, I'll even pay you to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but we were to just a channel a family. Mm. Even politicians have that as a rule. Mm. Families are no go zone. Mm. Yeah. But me, if you want to insult me, by all means. Yeah. So I don't mind. I look at it as it's your opinion. Fine. <laughs> and then, you by know, because we're in an era of a lot of blended families. Yeah. So we mm. see a lot more blended families in our age than we have, I think, even in the last 30 years. Mm. And so for me, it's not then I find out where does Mike's role stop? Mm -hmm. Where do their father's role stop? Where does Shiko's role stop with your mm -hmm. children? Mm -hmm. Where, because I'm sure in the household, you guys have had to create certain boundaries. Yes. Yeah. So where the, who, who starts where and who stops where? So... It depends on also the level of maturity with mm. the other party that's mm. involved. Mm. There are, there are um, uh, in my, like I can give you examples of in cases where you find women who are, are so bitter mm. about the mm. fact that you broke up. 
mm. right? Mm. That they can weaponize a child against you. Mm. Yeah. You understand? I will get you. So yeah. that um, uh, there's actually a current trend of baby, baby, baby daddy. Baby yeah. daddy challenge. Baby daddy challenge. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I've had I've, no. I've experienced it in terms of um, yeah. uh, an, an incident where one time I went to a hospital mm. because uh, my youngest was was uh, rushed there. She wasn't feeling well. Yeah. And I went with Shiko, and we were there with Shiko, and we, I took my baby, and I, I said, ah, let me, because Shiko had never met Ari at the time, so I, let me go and say hi. And I was told, hell no. Mm. Where are you going? Mm. Leave that child here. Wow. Just because I was going to introduce. So now you, you see, like, yeah. there are these cases that happen, mm. and that um, uh, where, where children are being weaponized. Now, on her side, on the other side, um, she has set clear responsibilities for... Uh, for uh, uh, her firstborn's dad and for the boy's dad. They're very clear. Mm. Just do X, Y, Z, the rest I will handle. Now, whatever she is supposed to handle, I look at it as now my responsibility mm. also. You understand? Okay. So if you're only paying school fees, yeah, then me, I'll do the shopping in the house. Mm for the food and for everything oh so you if her mm. role is the fees your role is the food it's the food oh, yeah because yeah. you still have to pay fees on your side exactly as well. yeah. mm. if you're doing entertainment if uh, that guy is supposed to handle entertainment for the children uh so and how she has to do let's say i don't know what all the um, shopping for clothes and whatever mm. so whatever is her responsibility mm. i take it as ours now mm. yeah so even on my side it's the same thing mm. where i have certain responsibilities that I, prov I do for my two kids but where it starts with mine that now shiko also becomes a part of a it part so of it, yeah. if it is i'm um, supposed to be going for outings with the children i'll make sure she's there mm. um if you're going for lunches or if we're do if we're dealing with the school matters for instance that's a miss story yeah. so i can i can also mm. allow her to yeah, be that's such an that. that's such an intricate balance because simply because i think I one thing can tick it off exactly yeah. just one you miss one you know yeah exactly it's yes. like a checklist it's like so umefanya, 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 yes. how do you do that because even like in terms of then how are you relating with the children's fathers yeah and how is she relating with I mean, since we're yeah. talking about you yeah. let's focus on the you part because now yes. she might have a different story from you <laughs> you'll be like they're fine and how she's like whoopee yeah really? no 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 like no, you know no. how are you how are you guys because i mean i we saw the other day ramsey came out and was like don't yes. take photos with my kids yes so me now i was really like okay this is a bone of contention already yes. over here yes did you guys manage to sort that out and also how are you guys then managing that no he's refused he's refused like i'll tell you for free he's re i've asked um and shiko has asked several times because I spend a lot of a lot of time around the kids, mm. right? So, because I'm there, I've asked Shiko, and Shiko has asked him. Like, to, I've asked Shiko to tell him which he has done. Mm. Like, talk to this guy, okay? Tell him I'm willing to sit down, with, meet with him, mm. with vibe, and we understand what roles we are both playing these kids. Mm. Lives. I've opened that for communication. He, well, he's constantly denied. So it's his prerogative. That's okay. Mm. Um, even that whole story of, uh, uh, of uh, posting uh, the, the toys and everything was neither here nor there. I got consent from the mother mm. and because I got consent, I don't think it was an issue. Mm. But he made it an issue and I, I personally didn't appreciate that uh, he went and uh, made that issue a public issue and yet it's an internal matter mm. between a family, right? Yeah. So you could... It's the, the other come. ways, yeah. yeah. You talk to me, man to man. Fact, man. In fact, if I was going to say, with most men, most men appreciate a man to man, man to man conversation. I think if you start <laughs> yeah. going around the corners, what for? Mm. It loses so, a, a taste to it. Yeah. So I've, I mean, he has my response from uh, my legal, uh, my representative. Whatever he decides is up to him. But for me, it's always about for the benefit of the kids, mm. and I want the kids to just to not be in an environment where any parental figure mm. is clashing with the other mm. parental figure. Mm. No, yeah, because in case in in the cases of uh, um, the firstborn dad, we are good. In mm. fact, we say hi to each other. We share a love of the same car. He drives a car just like mine. Mm. Yeah, and, <laughs> clearly know. she has the type. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if it can be, it's all about being cordial. Um, mm. uh, Shiko, uh, Shiko has met uh, Nicole's grandparents, for instance. Mm. Yeah, when uh, the last time I think we went to pick uh, Nicole up, she was present, and mm. everything was fine, and it's cordial, and 
uh, the Nicole's mom is very easy and good with it, mm. and uh, there's no problem. Nicole is your my first the first daughter. daughter. Yeah, all right, all right. and so it, it depends. There's a lot of maturity that's required in it. Yeah. But yeah. but mm. you know, Chito, maturity is very difficult to do in this era where I wanna score social media points with your yeah. mm. story or with you know so instead of me coming to talk to you directly yeah. I rather go on to social media so that then I, I get a few followers and you know it keeps yes. my relevance going on yes. because also we are we are sort of commercializing our stories thank and, and, you and, and it's that's terrible it's terrible it's terrible that mm. I mean I I'm going through a, a, something that is very terrible a pain me I'm yeah. thinking how do I convert this into content <laughs> so yeah. that I can convert get into money. Yeah, yeah, I money guess I'm money. Money. <laughs> <laughs> and which is neither here nor there yeah because you can't get the money you cannot get the money can go yeah. because the challenge with that is that then we don't have any private issues we're dealing with so we don't have private grief everything now must be broadcast and we don't have private exactly. stuff and you know it's just and I don't know, life was meant to be lived like that. Here's, here's something for anyone who's in a blended family. Mm. I'll give them a piece of advice. Eh? Mm. You better learn how to like the person that's in your ex's life. Mm. <laughs> if, no, no, let's be honest. Yeah. Do you know, like, like for example, if in uh, my case, uh, the same gentleman mm. would sit down with me and we can form a certain way of understanding how this mm. uh, situation is, uh, can be managed, right? where the children are involved or where uh, Shiko is involved in the interactions, right? Mm. Even if there are matters where he feels, hey, Mike, Niaji, I was supposed to do this, but Nico down. Mm. Can you hold it down for me for now and then I would do it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You mm. build a cordial understanding mm. whereby it's everything for the benefit oh. of the kids. Mm. Period, full stop, point blank. Mm. But now, if it's going to be a situation of a hostile attack and we are coming at each other and we are coming at till when who is going to mm. suffer mm. Yeah, yeah. so we sit down we understand each other yeah. I've got family members in my life who as if you see them mm. I've got aunties of mine if you see them with their ex-husbands you'll not know they are ex-husbands mm. that's an you think even maybe they are still together Mm. because of how cordial they are with each other, mm. how they know that it's important for the children, and the man plays a big role in that decision. Mm. Yeah? For in any argument between two adults, I believe children should be the last people to either suffer or even know that this argument exists. Mm. Yeah. 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 And, and that's what I think goes to what you're saying. Mm. When you display all these things mm. on social media, now you're exposing children yeah. to to all this uh, nonsense that really they, sh they mm. shouldn't be a part of. Yeah. And so when you connect then these two, you, you, f you guys are still figuring out how this blended thing is going to work. Mm. You have your children, you got to figure out how your children, yeah. how are you managing especially the relationships as a man between you and your biological children? Mm -hmm. Because you still have to maintain that. Yes. You still have to, and they're not living with you, they're living with, with, the the, with, with, with their, their mothers. mothers. Yeah. yeah. Um, how I'm trying to do it, at least I think with my, with my last born is where we've, we are having a bit of a rough time. Mm. Yeah. But with, uh, with my first born, I mean, she's accessible to me anytime I want. Okay. Um, so I make, it, I make it a point to make sure at least for the basics that she requires, mm. um, they are all there. Yeah. that she gets what she needs on the basic front mm. in terms of time it's still a bit of a process because i know you know women and men we are very different in terms of men can really let can really see the logical side of let's do something like this this is a sensible way of doing it mm. with women there are a lot of intricacies involved mm. um, probably the one part that i struggle with is having long-term custody of of my mm. firstborn. My last born is a bit young, so she still needs the mom. But yeah. for my firstborn, I think like I'd love in future a situation where if she's closed school, mm. she stays with me for her entire you know, yeah. holiday vacation, season, yeah. holiday season. Yeah. But sometimes it's a bit tricky and you have to learn how to balance it out. Yeah. Um, we still haven't yet agreed on that, but mm. hopefully over time things will change. Yeah. 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 Wow. But yeah. do you sometimes along the way you Question the choices you've made and said life could have been simpler before mm. sort of things like those. Am I you? It's just been very clear that this is where I am. I'm living in the moment and that's it. I, I don't know if I call it questioning. Yeah. Mm. I don't think I question. Yeah. I think I, I entertain the idea of would things have been different mm. if this had happened that way. Mm. 
one of the biggest questions I ask myself is, if my dad raised me until this age, would I still be the same Mike? Mm. Would I even be in radio? Mm. You know what I mean? Would I even be living in Kenya? Okay. Who knows? Yeah. But I don't necessarily question the choices I made because they have made me turn out into the human that I am today. Mm. I say all the time my children saved my life. Mm. The person I was before anyone, before my daughter was, my firstborn was born, that was a different Mike mm. from the Mike that is today. So I look at it like those, those girls saved my life. Mm. Um, do I wish, like, uh, do I, like, would, I, then I question it like in terms of would things have been different, for example, if I was still married to, if I was married rather to her mom, mm. would it have, would my daughter have had a better life or is this the best option that I had? Mm. And so you just ask these questions, but I don't think yeah. that I would have it played out any differently. I think why, why that question is important, Chito, is because yes. sometimes what often kills men is regret and mm. living in the past and guilt sometimes. Mm. Oh, things. But I like what you say that it's just okay to acknowledge yes. that those yeah. questions do exist. Yeah. But leaving the moment and say this is now this is these are the cards life has dealt me, yes. or I've chosen this, and therefore I gotta have to do the best I can do with what, what I, I have. have. Yes, that frees you from a lot of. I wish I did this. Ah, no, 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 no. Ah, no, 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 no. Yeah. There's nothing. Don't ever. S in fact, mm. don't say I wish. I regret. I no. Mm. That is what has happened. Yeah. Yeah. Acknowledge its presence. Yeah. Acknowledge it. That yeah. yes, this was a wrong choice. Mm. I should have done better. Yeah. However, this is now the reality that oh, exists. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how do I make the best out of this reality? Mm. If you sit back and start saying I wish, I wish, I wish. Hey. Bro, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Because me, I do the thing, even point. for me, I entertain because mm. like you lost, I lost my mom when I was young. Yeah. And even I have those entertain. I, yeah. I, I ask myself, where would I be? Would I be doing this? Yeah. Would I be here? Hey, could I be in this country? They're like intrusive well, thoughts, you know? Yeah, they, you, and then you entertain yeah. them for, you'll have like maybe a 15 minute day. Yeah. You'll imagine how maybe we'll be meeting for lunch. Bye. Maybe we'll be going out for brunch. Yes. Maybe going for holidays. Yeah. And then it's like one thing happens, you just look at a fly on the wall and you go, ah, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's reality. Ah, yeah. Let's get back to that. Yes, that's reality. But we may have dealt with those questions a lot. In fact, it, it just really weighed me down, you know. Mm. What if yeah. I did this? What if my dad did this? What if my mom did it? What if, you know, I was raised in a different family? And I I realized that that's, that was something that was really derailing my life. Mm. It's, not, it's through therapy that I was able to silence some of those voices. It was, and I think yeah. it was those voices were always in my head. Yes, you could have done this. Mm. You could have done this better. You could have, then you begin to beat yourself down, and you get yourself digging into that very depressive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You always look at it as it was. It's an experience you've gone through. It's mm. given you a lot more insight into yeah. life, and sometimes. Um, sometimes I think things happen to to for, people who for, yeah. Yeah, people who can handle it. For some reasons. divine reason. Yeah, for some, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for <laughs> some bigger reason. Yeah, yeah. You never yeah. know. And yeah. you never yeah. know it in the moment. I've actually learned to also look at life that way. Mm. Like I look at some of the things that have happened in my life. Like I think for me, it's still recently, not okay, recently, I consider it recently in my, when I actually realized, have you ever looked at death mm -hmm. and thought, huh, mm. could have been good that this happened. Exactly. Yes. You no yeah. longer look at it from this side. You from sit and you side, say, you yeah. know what, if this didn't happen, mm -hmm. yes. I don't think this would have happened. I don't think this would have happened. Yes. Like, it changes the whole trajectory mm -hmm. of where you would be and who you would be. Because exactly. yes. remember, death has also made you react certain ways to certain things. Mm -hmm. Like, yes. for me, I, the way I react to death is different from someone who's never mm -hmm. yes. lost someone. Who's never lost someone. Like, I, you know, I can literally see dead bodies on the road. You know, mm -hmm. border guys are knocked and they've been waiting. Yeah. Yeah. Me, I look. And I'll continue moving. And, yeah. But I have friends who can, as in they just said, Nini, they are already like mm. this. Mm. And even how you handle pain mm. exactly. is very different from yeah. how you handle yeah. pain. Yeah. Yeah. And I think men also need to start learning how to handle pain. You're mm. very right. Mm. How to handle pain and loss. Yeah. Because if you don't, mm. honestly, if you don't, I guarantee you, we are going to put you in the ground. Mm. You need to give us, there's a what if that you have in your life. Yes. You were meant to go to Canada at one point. Mm. I love Fuku Apa. You know, weird enough, <laughs> I was also meant to move to Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was also meant to move to Canada. And I was yeah, just like, yeah. mm, there's something about this Canada that we need to <laughs> run back. Why many people, you know people here in America, they go. They go. People yeah. here in Canada are like, mm, yes, <laughs> Canada is everything America wants to be. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's the weather. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah the cold, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I was supposed to go. When, yeah. I, when I finished my nursing, uh, education. I went and worked at Kilifi District Hospital. So the plan was to work there for a year mm. and then transition to, to, to travel to Canada. So we did all, all the paperwork. Mm. Um, uh, big shout out to my cousins in Canada. They did everything. Everything mm. was ready. Mm. Yeah, I was just supposed to go there. Then I was supposed to transition into the Canadian medical system. So mm. basically 
I would study for like three months for this major exam that I do, and then I get licensed to yeah. practice in, in Canada. Mm -hmm. Everything was ready. Yeah. I just could not see myself going. Why? I, I, Why? Yeah. Why? Especially, I, I, you know, I can't even. I knew the nursing is big in Canada. Exactly. Like people are making guap in Canada, like. Kabisa. Yeah, because proper. you can imagine that that was the time that just Kibaki was getting in, and so the country was not properly like yes. very stable. Yes. So people would have just decided, you know what, we are leaving. We I are think leaving. for the yeah. most part it was because I don't think I, I don't I think I studied uh, nursing because my parents wanted One. me to. Okay. Mm. I don't think I necessarily had a choice in terms of saying this is what I feel like I want to do yeah. and become. Mm. And at that moment, I was like, I, I don't know, I just, first of all, I didn't like the job. Mm. Um, unlike unlike uh, Chito, me, I cannot stand the sight of blood and all of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so <laughs> I couldn't. I was like, this cannot be my life. Yeah. And I quit my job. Mm. Uh, after I quit my job, came to Nairobi, hopped on a bus, came to Nairobi. And I came and I told my mom, I quit my job. And mm. she was she was livid. Mm. She was like, are you mad? Mm. Do you know how there are no jobs? Mm. And you're quitting your job. You know your brothers here need also assistance from you. And I said, I can't do it. Mm. So I, 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 I just came to Nairobi. And that's now how the idea of radio now became an option. Yeah. Because mm. kutafuta, kutafuta, and then you stumble onto radio. Yeah. How did you stumble? Because that's a very, uh, I don't know whether that's an interesting <laughs> way. That I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> excited by to know. Fluke. By fluke, yeah, just by fluke. Seriously, nobody told you when you're growing up that you look like you're gonna be. No, doing no, no. I was. I literally was. Uh, I was job hunting. Mm. At some point, I came to Alfajiri mm -hmm. restaurant. Mm -hmm. Here, Kwapo opposite. The next city. city. Mm -hmm. yes. And then me, I went. I sat down. I ordered food. Chakula ikaletwa ni kakula, but I paid the guy with a thousand bob. They could find change everywhere yeah, they were going. Also, you are rich. Job seeker. So hey, so there was a tent, there were guys lining up. I love you know in true fashion in Nairobi, whenever you see a line, mm. you know it's a job. Uh, <laughs> it's a job. <laughs> so I went and I literally just asked someone on the line, like, mm. hey Niaje, um, what's going on? Akasimo, there's this uh, station called Hot 96. They're looking for presenters, and so ah, then I asked, How much do presenters get? Paid? <laughs> and then they, you know, they threw out those ballpark figures used to hear of Kina Shafi. Uh, uh, at, hey, this one's hundreds of thousands. Uh -huh. nini, nini, nini. Yeah, and uh, he joined. So I, my phone back then had a, had a radio, uh -huh. so I put earphones Nikawasha radio in the line, mm. uh, and I'm walking as I'm listening to how presenting is being done. Uh, wow, yeah, uh -huh. and then when I got to my turn. I was told register here. Then there was a guy over there. He was called David More. I remember More. Yeah. yeah. Dreadies. Dreadlocks. Dreadlocks. Yeah. I know More. I know More. Yeah, More told me, Haya, go ahead, mm. uh, introduce a show. I literally memorized something I'd had on radio. Mm. Uh -huh. So I was there. I would just say, That's Tupac Shakur with Dear Mama playing on uh, Hot 96 FM. And coming up is a great track that is by. Wow. When I said it that way, he yeah. was like, Hmm? Have you ever done radio before? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> then he's like, okay, please go to the next stage. So I go to the next stage, he gave me a script. And then told me, uh, sit down, internalize the script, then come back and read it. Yeah. Same thing. I mean, in fact, that time I went on, uh, what do you call it, on mm. YouTube. Mm. Uh -huh. Then I played something that's like a news yeah. or whatever. So I listened, I listened how they're doing the delivery, blah, blah, blah. And then I said, okay, so let's do it. Then I went and I read it the way, the way I had it being done. Yeah. You know what's weird is mm. it's, it's so interesting that even when he's talking about his story mm. that me and you have had similar going yes. to Canada. Do you know mm. Mure offered me a job in Hot 96? Are you serious? Yeah, <laughs> when I was in Kampo. <laughs> okay. Remember Jesse? Yeah, MC Jesse. Yeah, remember MC, MC Jesse? Yeah. So yeah. when in campus with MC Jesse. Yes. So MC Jesse sees me and says, because I mean, I wanted to be on radio. Tell, tells me, see you guy, you yeah. come and you request that because of your name. Mm. Come and read news in. Mm. So then he takes me to More. Yes. So I did a voice test, ni, 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 ni. and then More never called me. Mm. Ah. So time passes. Then now I started working at 1FM. Yes. So I got a job at 1FM, yes. I started doing radio. Mm. More calls me on a random Saturday. Mm. And hey, says, Chito, so you come and you read for me news. I'm like, bro, me, I work on, I have my own <laughs> show. He's like, wait, what do you mean? So it's so interesting that, yeah. and even the fact that for you, it's a fluke. Mm. Yes. But you, okay, this sounds spiritual. But you see, for God, it's not a fluke. Yeah. Yes. It was like Mike Mondo is going to be at Alpha Jiri. On this exact, on this in fact, day, you got you hungry at the exact time the exact to time, go look for yeah. food at the right moment, yeah. and, you know, stuff like that. In so fact, for me, the lesson I'm learning from what you're saying is that oftentimes we are required to have 
we figured our stuff together and mm. like you know what you want to do for you to be a great man you gotta have to know what you want to do yes. you gotta be very clear about mm. many of these things but yes. I've, as i've come to learn that sometimes it's just about taking step one day at a time mm. and then you stumble on things that are gems and amazing yes. stuff and you wonder like wow mm. how did i become this yes you know? it's like for example mm. um it's like someone who says uh, yeah. mm. I always listen to that statement and I'm like, uh, mm. Biashara, like especially for people who sell goods mm. and items. I'm like, you see, you can't, you can't st stay in one place if you are a hawker, for instance. Who is the user to Apo Haderu Road, who can go to Kwamba Yopes? Labda Kunamutu, Apo Chini to Father. So the idea of waking up and doing something, mm. I, it's, it's really important. Yeah. Wake up. And do something. Make that phone call. Yeah. Anyone in sales tells you, for you to hit an X amount number of sales, there's a number of cold calls you have to make. Yes. Mm. One of them, Itangiana. Yeah. Mm. On that day, if I had slept at home and told myself I'm too tired to go and look for a job. Mm. If that day, if I had just to lead, not ask that guy a question, what's going on over mm. here? If I did not take an initiative of some sort, yeah. That opportunity would have passed. You wouldn't yeah. be here. Yeah. You don't know. Maybe later you'd have gone to Canada. Yeah, maybe I would have gone to Canada. Canada. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It is all about take a, the, the statement is opportunity waits for no man. Mm. You have to be able to be open and, and uh, to the idea that an opportunity can come anytime, anywhere. Mm. Are you prepared for it when it comes? Yeah, it should be prepared. The preparation, because yes. it can come, like you're saying, and come at any one point. Mm. And also, I think sometimes we don't do the thing. We don't. We yes. don't. We are not in the space of preparation. Yes. Sometimes preparation literally means just getting out of the house. Yes. Just preparation. You prepared yourself and you get out. out. Sometimes preparation mm. is if, like, you see guys who are in, like, many guys yeah. who come to us and say, oh, "I want to be on radio." I'm like, mm. "Bro, they're podcasts." Yes. Start, start there. Yeah. Exactly. Don't wait to get onto yeah. and start yeah. on your podcast because mm, yeah. guess what? Someone might hear you there and say mm. you fit yeah. to come in. Mm -hmm. But for me, I think because there are many men who've been condemned for not knowing what they want. Like you know, a lady comes to your life and she wants to know whether you figured things out, mm -hmm. where you wanna stay, where you wanna be in the next ten years, have a strategic plan. All that is nice. But majority of us don't know this type <laughs> of stuff. <laughs> know your stuff. Mm. But as somebody who has always stumbled upon things and I've realized that, of course, there's a divine hand guiding me, mm. I think it's also okay for us to tell people that it's okay to not have, to, uh, not, not have figured everything out. But because there are so many men out here who are struggling. What's my purpose? You know, you know when <laughs> yeah, 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 what's yeah, my purpose? What am I on earth for? You, know, you, for? Want, <laughs> you want clarity, but clarity sometimes comes by you leaving saying, I don't like this job. I know I don't like this job. Mm -hmm. What I want to do next, I don't know. But I'm going to take this step of faith, leave Mombasa, come to Nairobi. Yes. By faith. Yes. I'm going to go to Al-Fajiri by faith. And ensuring that, oh, by, the, by doing that, mm -hmm. the journey often is revealed mm -hmm. to you. Yes. And so I think for younger men, yeah. I think like us, it's n important that we know yeah. that. that it's sometimes, mm -hmm. And sometimes the path is through the grass. Exactly. But the grass is long. Exactly. long. You can't see it. You can't see it. So yeah. you have to cut yeah. You have to cut as you are it's going, very true. and the way the missionaries came to us, they had yeah. to cut grass in the middle exactly. of nowhere yeah. to get and to where they were going to. Also, don't be too hard on yourself. I like mm. that. Yeah. No mm. one truly has all the answers. Yeah, even Bill Gates no, hasn't that figured yeah, it yeah, out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's figured out yeah. Microsoft. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. still yeah. trying to figure yeah. out yeah. HIV yeah. and other things. Yeah. 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 No one truly has all the answers. Uh, Life yeah. is a series of efforts that you make, and you keep trying and moving. Even if, like... Um, uh, I always try and tell some of my friends, and they tell me at the mic, but you know, the Kazienua radio mm. is very volatile. Yeah, yeah. You can lose your job anytime. Yeah. What would happen? And I tell them all the time, yeah. see, if I lose it, I lose it. Yeah. But so now we go to the next one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I all, like all, that. Jobos, all Jobos. Are all Jobos. People, if you think about it, yeah. if you go in that theory, yeah. Yeah. Everyone's job is volatile. Even it's a CEO, yeah. you realize the CEO, if you don't meet the target, you know, life itself is volatile. Mm. Yes. A small bacteria can take you out. <laughs> exactly. You have no control over that thing. Yes. Yeah. In this country, you're rushed. I mean, you're going to have a drunk driver out here wiping you out. I'm not saying that's mm. what might happen. Yes. But if you consider risk as as a reason as to, a why, reason not to, to why, why not, not yeah. you not do anything. You don't even leave the house. Because the, the, some, the sky be, might fall down. Wouldn't be doing this show, bro. Wouldn't be doing this show. Yeah. 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 And yeah. As men, we have to know that it's so. Yeah. I mean, things come to an end. Mm. A job can come to an end. Yeah. A relationship can, can come, come to, to an, an end. end. Exactly. Uh, life can come to an end. Mm. Everything has an end point. When that time comes, mm. you move. Yeah. You accept what has happened. You move on. But like Chito said, mm. you also prepare yourself for the next phase of your journey. Mm. So even as you are in one point of your life, start mm. preparing for the next. 
Chito got into eh, mm. that's it. Now he's a father. Mm. 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 Now there's another journey. Mm. This kid has to go to school. Mm. Mm. So at this moment, he's putting in strategies mm. and stuff so that when that time comes, mm. I'm prepared to accept. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. you never know. Your child may one day tell you, Me, I want to go to Yale. Yeah. Now, do you know the fees? <laughs> <laughs> hey, no no way. Way. Imagine. Yeah. $330,000 a year. A year. A year, my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry, it's the whole course. It's, the whole it's course. about 60000 a year. Yeah. Uh, uh. And uh, the mm -hmm. kid has all A's. Yeah. <laughs> now what you tell <laughs> the child? Yeah. You know, I have a friend of mine who is uh, a friend of mine whose sibling yeah. actually did so. So the father did that thing for when the kid wants to go to Cambridge, the UK. Yeah. So the father told her, okay, yeah, yeah, you get good grades. Then as time was getting closer, the father started telling her, now you start also preparing yourself. Yeah. So you know what this chick started doing? She started mm. going researching on Cambridge. Mm. She did everything prepared herself for Cambridge. Yes. The father has been forced to, mm. to figure it out. Now so figure it out. Because yeah. now she's, yeah. she's done her part. Done That's why you part. can't yeah. not say at you, you know. So now she's actually, she actually went to Cambridge by then. That's nice. Wow. She actually went to Cambridge because now the dad also is so, hey, we've got a co serious. Yeah. Deal started coming. He yeah. got tender, her papa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But that my, is very true. When I, was, when, I mean, it's very interesting. There's something that is still fascinating me, mm. you know. We were talking about the media, how the media can sort of lead to mm -hmm. addictions. And, you yeah. know, I don't know how you've dealt with the pressure of that. Have you had to deal with one substance or the other? Or yes, I have. I, I've, uh, it's just recently that I stopped smoking. Wow. But drinking, mm. drinking was really bad. I think... Uh, Cheeto has been witness to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the beauty, the disclaimer though, mm. yeah. never affected his work. Mm. Yeah. Never affected never, I think it's always important to have that disclaimer. Yes, you know, someone can be true. like, when you Jamal, go on a vanya kazi yeah. Never mm. affected his work. Okay. Never got into accidents. Never. Mm. So you were responsible enough to leave the yes, car yes. and go and do yes. your stuff and then use an yes. Uber. Go there are times when I, I would drive, but yeah. it wasn't, um, it used to be like short distances. Mm. So you wouldn't see me partying in Gong Road and that time I was living on Kiambu Road. Mm. I mean, that's impossible. Yeah. There was a time I drank so badly, I was in fact immediately after the birth of my second child, I was admitted in hospital wow. for, for one week mm. because of drinking. Mm. So that in itself, and I, I mean, those, the pressures like you face as a man sometimes. Mm. Right? I had a new baby, I had my own personal issues with the mother, I had Jobo to think about, I had Sijuo, that and this, and family, extended family, you're worried mm. about. I used to drink a lot. I'd wake up in the morning, have a cup of coffee, coffee and the next thing I do is pour a drink. Mm. Mm. And then start drinking in the house. Let me ask you this. Mm. And I think because you've, you've touched on something and I feel like we're connecting, we're making lines here and we're connecting different, yeah. different uh, stores. Especially in regards to like your father. Mm. And I want us to talk about how that affects in our next episode. Mm -hmm. So we close this episode, and we come back in our next episode and we continue so that you can share about how that then comes and affects you with that. Mm -hmm. So you're on Manspective Africa. And of course, thank you so much for joining us. We are shooting this from Karibu Inn. This is in Loresho. You can come here, man. They've got conference facilities. They've got lunch. They've got breakfast. They've got all these things that you might want and you can enjoy with. We are in a place called the gazebo that you can come and have your events, whether it's a wedding, a birthday party. Silence is golden, speech is silver. I am the golden voice. Godson Chiron Lovu. My name is Danish Odongo, a.k.a the son of Kano.